Hi there. Uh, oh, it's quite loud. Uh, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, yeah, just indulge myself there with an intro song. I hope you don't mind. Um, my name's Todd Halfpenny. Um, I work for a company called Mobile Caddy. Um, and I'm going to tell you some things, hopefully at least one thing today that you don't know yet. Um, there will hopefully be time at the end for some questions, but this is going to be uh, pretty hard and fast. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, but I need you first to all do something for me, if you can, in exchange for this one piece of advice that you don't know yet, uh, and that's to think of something funny. And if you could start nodding your heads for me like this. I can't see it yet. I need people to be doing this with me. And start thinking of something funny, something good, something that makes you happy. I don't know if you've seen these kids. They all fall over. <laughs> and it just keeps looping. It's brilliant. Uh, watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, oh, that's me. Right. Thank you, thank you, that's very kind. Um, like I said, my name's Todd Halfpin. I work for a company called Mobile Caddy, and we have an SDK for building mobile and desktop apps, but that's nothing to do with today's talk, really. Um, questions will be at the end um, if we get time, but this is going to be very rapid, so you just have to stick with me if we can. Um, my talk is called Browser Dev Tool Debugging Like a Unicorn Ninja Cat Rockstar. Um, I chose the title because Simon wanted a, a talk with unicorn in the name, so I did it, hoping I could change it, and he said no. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, as with all good Dreamforce talks, I don't know if you've ever seen, they have kind of somebody in a fake garage or a fake vending machine and stuff. I've got my fake developer. Uh, oh, he hasn't got audio, but he's saying he's happy. Everything's good. Um, he's going to be doing the keyboard for me today. Um, so what I need you to do, Todd, is, is go to the London Calling page and open up the Open up the dev toolbar, if you can, because we, we don't want this title. This is ridiculous. Um, if we could just type in here, document.design mode. You could do that for us? He's really slow at typing. Um, design mode, spell it correctly. Yeah, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Equals on. Um, and what this is going to do is turn our entire page into an editable interface now. Uh, so you can just select text and then start typing into it. Uh, what's he going to say? Cool, eh? If he spells it right. Yeah, neat. Um, so this is really useful if you're wanting to kind of, if you don't want to put up loads of mock data, but you want to test an interface with different types of content, um, especially useful when you've got some plum who puts in a really long uh, title slide uh, name. Oh, yeah, this is... Thank you very much. Um, and so that's document.design mode, right? So that's one tip. Who knew about document.design mode? No one? Ah, oh, I was hoping there'd be no hands and we could all call it a day, because that would be my one tip you didn't know. Uh, so let's see, how can we use this um, in real life? Like I said, it's useful if you're wanting to kind of change your, change your UI, change the data on here, perhaps put some, put some text in that you're not likely to put in or not having in your your dummy data. That could be really useful uh, for testing on different screens. But I don't want to type document.design mode all the time um, because, yeah, I'm not very good at typing, as you can see. Um, and so what we're going to do is jump into the sources tab up here in our dev tools. And we're going to use something called snippets. Uh, and here I've got a snippet called design mode. I'm just going to run that. And now my screen is, is editable again, which is pretty good. Um, if I right click and run again on this snippet, it's turned it off. Um, and so what is a, a, a snippet here? Let's have a, a look inside. And a snippet is just really any old JavaScript. Um, in my case, it's an extraordinarily in-depth piece of JavaScript. I won't go into the details. It will blow your mind. Uh, but pretty much turn stuff on and off. Uh, yeah, in fact, that's all it does. Um, and that's quite handy. And I use these snippets all the time in my day-to-day -day job. Um, at Mobile Caddy, we um, build apps, or we have our partners build apps, and they're using Angular. Um, and you can access Angular services. It doesn't matter what they are, but this is the kind of line you need to do that from the console. And that's a real pain in the, to type. Um, <coughs> and then I have another one here, which is for accessing Mobile Caddy tools. So these are 
not necessarily to be run, but they just save me typing, save me storing them in like a text editor and copy and pasting. I can just right click and run those. And that's pretty handy. So that's design mode and snippets. Uh, how far are we in? Five minutes, that's not, that's not great. But how can we use snippets in Salesforce world? Um, so this here is a really exciting uh, input form from the Lightning Trailhead badge, I think. There's an expenses form in there. Um, and if you're kind of building up forms in UIs and you want to be inputting data, test data all the time, it can get a bit boring writing Joe blogs or, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever you put in. Uh, so I've got a couple of snippets here for my, my Lightning form that I can just run to input data into them without having to keep smashing, smashing my keys. Uh, and I can have ones for invalid data and, and valid data. So, for example, this is an invalid one where I'm putting in ABC into the amount mode. Um, I don't know why Leia's buying phasers. Maybe some problem in the camp. And I can turn it around again and run, um, run some valid data in there as well. And then what we can do is you know, just go down and click our Create Expenses button and, and run through. And that just saves a lot of typing and save a lot of time. But, oh, something didn't work here. So I click Create Expense, and actually it came up with expense name can't be blank. That's, that's not right. Let's run it again. Definitely got some content in there. Create expense. Expense name can't be blank. And unfortunately, in this current mode, whether it's to do with locker service or, or something within the URL layout, I don't really know. Probably locker server service because you're not meant to be mucking with the DOM. Um, it doesn't work. Uh, but fear not because there's this other thing you might have, might have seen. It's been around for a little while and there's certainly lots of this Visual Force and Apex around. Um, so let's see if we can use our snippets in Visual Force pages as well. Uh, in here, I've just got uh, three inputs. Uh, this is from the Visual Force Basics trailhead as well, which I've almost got my badge on. So I know, I'm hoping to finish it this year. Um, well, I've got a couple of snippets again for this particular form, um, and I've got a valid data and an invalid data one. Um, here's a Duff email address. Let's see if this one works. Oh, it does. That's good. So you can use snippets in your Salesforce development, just not in Lightning or at least not in the current setup I've, I've got it working in, or not working in. Um, and yeah, the valid form runs through OK, so that's all good. So that's design mode and snippets and how you can use them in, um, in Salesforce. We're going to skip now to another DevTools tab. This one's the Elements tab. And sticking with our Trailhead uh, Visual Force page, um, something you can do in here, which is quite smart, we'll jump to the Elements tab, is I can select chunks of the DOM, chunks of the UI um, from within the elements page here. And this is something I didn't know until I was writing this talk, but I can, if I got it selected, I can just drag the DOM elements from within the right-hand side here up and down, and it will change my UI. So let's say you're sitting with the product manager for this, this application, this form, and they're saying, well, last name's really important to us. Can we just quickly see what it looks like with last name at the top? And you're like, yeah, I'm not even going to write any code. And Salesforce love that, right? Um, so and you can do that, and you can drag it around, do whatever you want. And one of the amazing things, actually, about DevTools is you can control Z or control Y to undo, redo, um, or whatever you funny kids do with your Macs. Um, and that works throughout all of the tabs. So whether you're dragging and dropping in the DOM, or you're changing source code, or you're doing whatever, control Z, control Y, y works throughout. That's really, really smart. Uh, drag and drop and undo. Yeah, wicked. Uh, what was next? Uh, oh, yeah, so another great thing about the DevTools is I suppose if any of you built um, kind of apps for smaller resolutions or, or mobiles, you've used to kind of squidging the, the, the browser backwards and forwards and stuff, when you can only go normally to a certain point, with DevTools open, you can shrink it down even smaller. So that's good, especially when you've got an umpty with a title like that that's likely to break your mobile site. <coughs> this one doesn't. I thank God. Um, but what you can also do is take it a step further with DevTools and open the device toolbar. So you can start uh, representing different phones. So I've got an iPhone 5 here, um, or an iPhone 6. Um, and that's really useful. Again, if you're sitting with somebody who's an owner of this product, you can show them some context. And you can actually take it a step further, um, like rotation, orientation in there, and scaling. But we can also start adding, within Chrome, device frames. Uh, around this. Look at how big that is. That's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it's big from here. So, 
um, yeah, let's switch a device frame on. So now I've got something that I can just throw up. And this is really handy for giving people an idea of what their product, what their app's actually really going to look like. And you can do all these things. You can also capture screenshots. This will save a, an image file of that. Um, and then you can just send it off to whoever you want to, which is, which is really nice. Uh, saves you having any kind of simulators and, and whatnot running up. Um, and again, even when you're in this mode, you can still do the dragging and dropping of elements. So, uh, for example, in here, I can drag the location to below the time. And I say, hey, Jody, is this what you meant by moving the time? Uh, I don't know. Um, and just drag it back up again. So all of that stuff still works in there, which is good. How are we doing for time? Device toolbar. There must be one thing left, I think, in the elements tab. I can't remember what it is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what it is now. Um, so at the top here, I don't know if you can see, it's really small, so I should have made it. Oh, I did make it bigger. Um, the dollar zero there um, is something special, and that's like the, the node I've selected. If I move down to the other nodes, you see the dollar zero follows me along. And what I can do is I can use that dollar zero in my console here. So if I type dollar zero, go on, Todd, yes. No typos that time, that's good. Um, and what I actually get is, a, is, a, is a, the actual node represented down here, and I can expand it, explore it. I can click on it and see where it's going. Um, and that's pretty good. If you've got markup that you want to be changing, want to be moving around, or maybe you're investigating someone else's code, this can be a really handy case. Um, there's also the clear command. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I don't know why I did it, because you can control L much quicker. Um, and then let's say this, this is an in-depth span, uh, in-depth markup you want to put inside an editor, maybe to have a look at it. You can just do uh, copy. Todd, just do copy. Yeah, we'll do it in a minute. Will it? Yes, he is. Uh, just write top copy, and then put in your dollar zero, which we had. And what that's now done is copied all of that markup from within that DOM node into my, uh, what's it called, clipboard? Is it called a clipboard? Clipboard. Yeah, and I can paste it out into anywhere I want, um, which again is, yeah, it's, it's really, really fascinating how deep you can get inside all of these tools. Um, I think that's all. Dollar zero and copy. That was the elements tab. That's very brief. There's a whole load more, uh, but we don't have time. And my ears are getting really hot. Uh, so let's jump into the sources tab. The sources tab. Well, we're going to be coding now, so this is going to be code, right? So we want to be a little bit more hack hackers, I think is how they pronounce it. Um, so with Control Shift P, I can open up this Chrome DevTools shortcut thingy. What's it? And now we've got dark theme. This is better, right? This looks like a proper coder's IDE now. Um, and what I've got here, this is my lightning form again, and I've, I've come across this form, and the problem is it's not working. That, that validation that I had earlier that I didn't want working is still not working, but it's not working in the wrong way. It's not, it's not firing. It should be telling me here I've got a problem. Um, so what I can do in my sources tab is I can bring up the, uh, the lightning code, the JavaScript with the lightning code, um, in my sources tab and have a look into it. This is, um, I only found this out whilst doing the talk again. This is actually the controller and the helper of the lightning component all combined into one, which is how I suppose it must be, must be served out. Um, and this here is a chunk of code, which is my really in-depth validation for this form. Um, <laughs> it's very expensive. Um, and what I've done is I want to I want to work out what's happening here, why this is not working. So I've I right clicked on, uh, so I clicked on the line number and I've put in something called a breakpoint. And now when I run my code, my uh, my code will stop at this point here, and I can now start exploring in depth. I can have a look at all the values of the variables, um, and something well something's wrong. And I said, well my expense name was false. I'm sorry if this is quick. But it's got to be. Uh, and so I've, I've, I've checked in, and now I've gone into my if statement. Right, this is happening. My code should be working. We're into this right block. Um, and I've run it again. Yeah, it's, it's hitting there, and my expense name has got a value, so I shouldn't go into my if block. Um, so I'm going to step over this. Well, I'm not. I'm going to continue running. And I didn't fire my second breakpoint, which is good. That means my if is working. So let's go down further in. In fact, what I want to do is, as I'm testing, I now don't want my breakpoint to be firing anymore every time I input. So I'm going to put a condition on my breakpoint, basically saying, don't fire if expense, uh, do fire if expense name is empty. Um, again, that means that I can start digging down and into my debugging and really find out where things are going wrong. Uh, it's a bit of a funny use case for it, but <laughs> just bear with me on this one. Um, so I'm firing now, and we can see that my expense name is empty. My conditional breakpoint should fire. So we should jump into the next breakpoint. 
if I continue. What am I doing? I must have been having a drink at this point. Oh, I'm saying, right, yeah, we need to investigate this code. So what I can do is I don't want to be hacking around in my dev console too much in this source here. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start um, moving at this, and I'm going to map this file onto a local file system file. So basically something that's on my own Linux machine. Um, and then I can hack around and play with it and not worry about impacting uh, real code or anything like that. And I do that by right-clicking and say, right, map to file system. Um, and I can put in a file name, say, yeah, this is the file on my local computer that I'm going to be using. And I then get a, uh, yeah, a local instance of this code. I can then, uh, I'm jumping into Sublime now, and there is the same file. It's exactly the same file as I had there in my tab. This now allows me to kind of mess around completely. I can use all my linting in it or anything I want. Um, and I found the problem, I spelled message wrong, which is not entirely uh, unrealistic. Um, and as I saved it, what happened is the source in my browser updated immediately, even though I was still in the breakpoint. And I continued running, and you can see that it's now fired with, I don't know what that is. Is it there? Yeah. Which is a kind of bit of a contrived example, but you can see that you can start really, really moving around these things. Um, the last tab I've got here is my favorite tab, actually. This is the, this is the console. Uh, this is where things really start getting, that's just a bit geeky, isn't it? Um, so you can do dollar dollar in here, and then you put in like a tag name or something, and I put it in input. And this is again on my lightning form. And what I've, it's returned me is an array of my input elements, which is pretty cool. And I can explore into them. I can see what's on. Like also, it maps back to the, the DOM on the left-hand side to see what I'm looking at. And if you click on them, it takes you into the elements piece. You can see where it is in your markup. Uh, that's pretty useful. Um, I can now use $0 again, because that was the last thing that I'd selected and, uh, or had been assigned. And that outputs. Um, in here, what am I going to do now? I think I'm going to put an expense form in. I don't know if the boss will clear it, but we'll see. That's quite small, but it says post London's calling drink. How much? One. Oh, <laughs> I don't know who's. I don't know who's going to pick up the project for this. Are oh, you lot? Cool, excellent. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to run through this form, and I've added a breakpoint into this now that is going to fire at the point at which. My expense has been pushed into the system, and I'm going, to, I'm going to list them all out. And I basically have an array of something that's going to be created, an array of my expenses. Um, we're now going to see how we can play around with that in the console at runtime. Uh, so I've got a, a console.log line in here, line 65. Sorry, it's very quick. Um, and running that, it's output, oh, output this object, which I have a look in is an array, and it's an array of my expenses. and and that's what I've got. And Chrome's really nice. It allows you to dig in and dig out of these, these objects and reference them. And I can also, what I've done here is uh, I can right click and say store as a local variable or global variable, I think, global variable. And that then gives me um, a variable that I can then use in, in my command line, uh, my JS console willy nilly as I want. So let me clear, the con clear that back out. And if I now write temp1, uh, oh, console.log temp1, I should then see the same. Uh, JavaScript array output again. If I spell it correctly, yeah, cool. Um, and this is still my array of objects that I can still dig into, has all the valuables, uh, has all the values, and also will be updated as we go. Um, but that kind of looks a bit rubbish if you've got a lot of, let's say I had five or six expenses. What you can do is use console.table that then displays them out in a nice, uh, well, a nice, easier way to read them. And also, this is sortable, right? This table is sortable, which is, I mean, that's. I just think it's freaking brilliant. Um, the, what, what else have we got? All right, yeah, let's say someone is looking, like your code is going to be looked at. People like us are going to be looking at other people's code in the dev console, because that's kind of sad people that I am. Um, and one of the things you want to do is make sure that other people are reading your code. Like, you know that they're inside the dev consoles when your app's running. So you can use CSS styling in your console logs. Right? Make them a bit more exciting. This is freaking brilliant. Uh, so watch this. This is just. It blows my, so, so I added my styles using a snippet. <laughs> How cool is that? That's just, um, and I've got one last thing, and that's just because our CEO is in the audience, so this is for him, and uh, my pay review might be coming up, so we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated on Twitter if I do get it, that'd be good. So I'm console.log, I'm going to use this, so dollar $C is what I'm passing in the argument here, and this is my styles, which is just a CSS string, right, inline CSS string. How about that? 
Like that, we've got a background image, we've got rounded borders, like, <sighs> lightning's got nothing on this shit, right? <laughs> that's, just, that's just amazing. Uh, so that was console tab. There's a whole load to it, there's a whole load more than this as well. Um, this talk really is about making you think that if you're, if you're developing and you want to be debugging, then you can just really go right down into a whole load of that. Um, there's a few references here. I'll, it'll all be up on somewhere, so don't worry about writing it down or anything. Um, but yeah, like Remy, for example, is just like a, the guy's a genius. So yeah, definitely check out his blog. Um, and that's it. Questions, please. Thank you. I think look at that. Ooh, perfect timing. Any questions? No. Excellent. Can we go to the bar?